we go to the Kelvin uh, settings here, we can work with the white balance in Kelvin by using this knob over here. And if I press the knob, then I can change into course mode that gives me a little larger steps on the white balance. We have red gain and blue gain, which will adjust the highlights of your image. So let's just see. See, we see we are adding red here to the highlights and now we are uh, we are reducing the blue. We see immediately the values here. Our dear friends at Canon are on fire in bringing out powerful new cameras to the broadcast market. And the C300, the ESC300 camera is one of these that can now be controlled with Skyhoy hardware. And that's what we'll look at in this video. But it could also be the C500 Mark II. Both of them are having the new XC protocol, which enables Skyhoy RCPs and PDC controllers to control these cameras. So EOS. C300 Mark III and C500 Mark II. Those are the models that are supported here. They need to have this Ethernet unit attached to them. I, I hear there is a number of different variants, but in order to connect them to your network, you need this one for Ethernet connectivity. I would also say and claim that the Skahoy integration here is the first one that you will find. It's, it's exclusive. I don't know of anyone else at this point of video recording where there's an RCP or any hardware that would control these cameras. We've been working closely with Canon to bring out this configuration. For a whole year, we have been working with the XC protocol and, and um, improving our integration through Blue Pill. And what is Blue Pill? It's a product from Skahoy. Actually, it's this one, but it's both this physical product that will enable Unisketch panels like this RCP V2 to talk to new modern cameras like the uh, ESC300, C500 from Canon, the XC protocol. It's also the general platform description we are using for um, the software and the whole ecosystem that surrounds this one. Because you know from Unisketch that we have device cores. We also have device cores on Blue Pill. In this case, we have written the device core for the ESC300 Mark III camera for Blue Pill. We have not written it for Unisketch, but Unisketch controllers can still work with this camera through the Blue Pill. So the Blue Pill is really an extension, a booster technology for the Unisketch panels from Skyhoy. You also find a new product from us, the RCP Pro, just next to the RCP V2. So actually, if we kind of separate this a little bit, you'll see that these go together. RCP V2 talks to the Blue Pill and controls the Canon camera. RCP Pro has Blue Pill inside. We realized that a lot of camera control applications would be better served if we put the Blue Pill inside the product. So RCP Pro, our new flagship premium RCP, has it built in already and talks directly to the camera. Today, We'll look at this side by side because it also gives us a chance to sort of sort of compare, right? And uh, let's just look at the few features here. We have RCP Pro in a different color. It has an amazing iris joystick. Display on top, it has a um, high resolution encoder ring for pedestal adjustment. And of course the iris functionality here, it has a display on top that will show you the iris value Depending on configuration, it can show you more. It could also show the pedestal value. In this configuration, we did not use that. It has push function. So by pushing it, you can send instructions to a video router to bring up the source you're shading on a monitor in front of you. And it has a little tally LED here that can work separately or synchronously with the tally LED on the RCP. So this is Skahoy's innovation in the RCP market. Really, really great. And we also, we, we were actually struggling to find things to improve on the RCP V2, but we thought that putting a little bit of tilt to the display wouldn't hurt. So you also find a tilted display for improved ergonomics of the controller. Finally, I want to point out that on the back side, there's a little DB9 connector like there usually are on RCPs. And uh, we have a one channel input and output on the RCP V2, but we have three channels on the RCP Pro. So those were some of the differences in comparing these two units. 
Today they'll be doing exactly the same, RCP V2 through the blue pill and RCP Pro directly in connection because it has the blue pill inside. The C300 Mark III is pointed to a little setup over here with the Skahoy logo and the color chart and a Tesla Roadster model 1 to 18. This setup is our target for today. And the EOS 300 Mark III is right here. So um, fundamentally, when we work with the Skahoy RCPs and Blue Pill, we have uh, spent some time to make our configurations unified. So they work in the same way because we realize if you go by our claim to have universal RCPs that will enable you to shade many different cameras, we need to bring in some consistency in how they are configured. So for instance, on an RCP Pro like this, or on this configuration, we are introducing the home screen. And the home screen is where you have the most important settings that you want to have direct access to during a production. And that's, of course, is a selection that we have made for you. And if you disagree, you can go into the configuration of the uh, RCP Pro on the blue pill, and you can actually modify what gets on your, onto your home screen. So it's possible, and you can even do it without deviating from the uh, default configuration supplied by, by us. So it's like you only overwrite that part, but you still benefit from having a configuration that may be updated from Skahoy's library in the future. So that's one of the design improvements that we have found introduced on the Blue Pill and Reactor platform um, over the Unisketch platform. In the home screen, you find um, white balance mode, which is currently set to Kelvin, but we can change it to other presets like daylight. We have tungsten here and white balance A and B banks, as you would know from, from many other cameras. And surely if you own the C300 Mark III, you already know what we're talking about, right? So in a demonstration like this, my job is to show you that what you already know is in your camera, is brought out to your fingertips with tactile control points on a Skahoy product like this. So that's, that's our goal, right? But in terms of how we have uh, designed the home screen, you have access to the white balance mode. You also have access to, let's say, if we go to the Kelvin uh, settings here, we can work with the white balance in Kelvin by using this knob over here. And if I press the knob, then I can change into course mode that gives me a little larger steps on the white balance. That's the typical Skahoy feature that as you enter into course mode, you take larger steps as you turn the knob. We have red gain and blue gain, which will adjust the highlights of your image. So let's just see. See, we see we are adding red here to the highlights and now we are uh, we are reducing the blue. We see immediately the values here also, and we can do the same actually to the pedestal values. So we have red pedestal here. I will uh, increase that. You can see how the, the dark tones in the image becomes more red. And I could also try to increase the blue uh, tones in the darker areas like this. So you see those two are brought out onto the home screen. I think if we if we go to the color settings, ah, notice in the color settings, you find at the exact same locations that you have red gain and blue gain, red pedestal and blue pedestal. So we'll see that in a moment and let's just keep this tightly tinted image uh, for now. So what else you have on the home screen would be gain and shutter speed. So shutter speed, for instance, as you would su uh, suspect, we can change the shutter speed um, through the different values that are allowed by the camera. And I'll just put it back to 150 here as um, yeah, we'll use that for the rest of the demonstration. If we go to exposure, you have um, um, the mode of exposure up here. It's currently at manual. Then you have the iris. So let's just look at iris. The iris joystick here will adjust the iris. This is how a classic RCP works. Now, if you wonder why is it stepping, it's because the DSLR lens that we have put on the camera today is stepping. So inside this lens, there's only discrete steps of iris. This is why you see it stepping, but it doesn't have to be like that. It depends on the lens. But in this case, the lens is connected to the camera and controlled through the camera. Did you know that the Skahoy Universe offers you a way to put other lenses on a C300 Mark III and control it through other um, um, communication ways? Take, for instance, a B4 lens. A, if you could attach a Fujinon lens to this camera and it had no way to be controlled by, by the actual camera or any other lens that you could attach successfully to have the optical side solved, we are able 
to control that lens directly through other auxiliary boxes. So go check that out in the Skahoi um, ecosystem and rest assured that you can have it integrated on your RCP so it becomes one unified experience, even though you are actually talking to two different devices, the camera and the lens. But my point here is that the Iris joystick works with the lens as you could expect. You even see the display is changing the value. Now, this one, the RCP just next to is doing the same things, actually. So I can also adjust the, the iris here. They are both talking to the camera. So I thought it was a little bit fun bringing it in. And maybe if we go here, you can also see how the values are changing in the display on, on both devices because they are synchronously talking to the camera. And maybe you noticed the same thing when we were, were on the home screen that these things were also synchronized between the two units. Okay, so let's just uh, pump up the iris so we have a clear picture here and move on uh, through what else is here. We have the exposure uh, section. Now let's use the RCP V2 a little bit. Here you'll find that there's an ND filter built-in. Pro feature, guys. Motorized ND filter in EOS C300 Mark III. And um, turning this slowly, you'll see that we just need the motor to add the ND filter. And obviously my studio is not enough lit, uh, uh, sufficiently well lit, to really justify the use of ND filters, obviously. So we'll quickly uh, go back to no ND filter, um, but it's possible and it's a nice, nice feature of these cameras, obviously. If we go to this, the color page here, I want to show you a feature which is pretty neat. We have color presets. This is presets not in the camera, but in the RCP. So with Skahoi, you also find that a lot of things um, kind of possible across devices and for any device. And for instance, we have defined a color preset for the EOS C300 Mark III camera and the Mark II camera that will take all the settings on the color page and on the knee page and allow us to recall presets. So you know what knee is. We have knee active on off, knee point, knee slope and sharpness level here on this menu. And uh, on the color, we have already talked about these. We have pedestal here, which you also find down here, and we could adjust, uh, adjust it on the ring of the joystick. So those settings are stored on presets, and that's the blue buttons on the top. So now I'll press this one, and notice that it will recall a number of settings that were stored on this preset. You also see the change to the image. I can now recall a different preset. So I press the second button there, and now you see a different tone of the image and then I'll press the final one here, which I think is almost at least um, neutralizing the red and the blue gains. So that were three presets already stored in the unit. If I want to make a, a fourth one, I could, for instance, reset these values down here by pressing and holding. And then I could change a little bit here. And let's see if we could find another uh, white balance setting for that. I now press and hold and it will become green shortly. And now if I go to the first one, you see these values are inserted and then I press here and I'm recalling the preset I just made. Exactly like you know you can do on PDC cameras, but for position. We made that in the controllers and that would work for any camera, not just these ones, but it's a feature of the uh, reactor platform in Blue Pill. So that's really exciting. We have an OSD section for this camera. OSD means on-screen menu, and we already see it. So the output from the camera has the on-screen menu uh, shown. And therefore, if I turn it off here, then you see um, no on-screen menu anymore, but I turn it on. I can um, choose different functionality on the screen type. Um, if I go to menu, for instance, and I press the execute button, then I, I'm able to now browse around. And what I can do on the left, right, up, down navigation is to go left and right. I can go up and down. And then I can select something by enter. I press here, for instance, then I could go up and down again to select my value. I could press enter or cancel. And if I cancel many times, then I get out and I can now turn off the on-screen uh, menu. Now, you wouldn't need on-screen menu, right? Because we can adjust all these things from the RCP, but then yet again, you do because we have not implemented everything on the RCP and for good reasons. There's probably no need for you to access every single detail of the camera from the RCP. And honestly, I'm not sure that we have them all, actually. Therefore, on-screen menus are often super useful for you as an RCP operator being able to, to take that route if there's anything that you need to access. So that's here as well. 
And then finally, we have a number of functions in here that you can execute. You can set zoom speed and sensitivity and manual focus speed. And you know what? These are not super exciting on the RCP, but they are here because they are useful on our PTC controller configurations. The fact is, on Blue Pill, the way we do configurations is that we make them so universal that you can apply the same pro class configuration on an RCP and on PDC Extreme, for instance. Those two controllers are sharing a lot of features, but they have unique things. Since I mentioned PDC cameras, it is because the Canon XC protocol has been engineered by Canon so that it will work both with these cameras, but also their PDC cameras. So it's the same way we communicate, but we have implemented the exact feature set of C300, C500, as uh, we have also implemented the exact feature set of the CR N500 and N300, the two PDC cameras that Canon put out recently. Thanks for watching and make sure you reach out to our sales team if you have questions about this integration. They would love to help you be successful with controlling your Canon EOS C300 and 500 cameras using Skyhoy RCPs, the Blue Pill platform, Reactor and everything. We are really excited about this technology and we'll bring out a lot of content on social media, on YouTube, about this platform and how to make specific integrations and what you can generally expect from it. So make sure you follow us on all these media channels to stay on top of the news that we're bringing to you.